Greetings, Living Way Church. I trust that you all are having an amazing time at family camp. I wish that we were there with you. Um, Pastor Dinesh asked me to give you a bit of an introduction on a discipleship tool that we are using. Personally, for me, it's been such a blessing, a, a mode of growth for me, but also to a lot of our young people. And we are actually using this to roll it out across our churches um, next year. And it's called Jesus Disciple. Now, before I go into the tool in itself, just a little bit of a background on discipleship. See, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, Jesus' commission was, go and make disciples of all nations. You know, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them what I have taught you. And his promise was, I will be with you until the end of the age. And I believe that each one of us, we are called to be a disciple of Jesus. We are not called to be just an observer. We are not just called to be a Sunday Christian, but we are called to be a disciple of Jesus, living our faith walk, living our commitment and obedience throughout the week until he calls us home. And we are not just called to be a disciple, but we are also called to be disciple makers. In other words, through me being a disciple, I am called to disciple others around me. That's why Jesus said, teach them what I have taught you. So it's what you learn, what your journey is like, you then share with someone else. When we look at the ministry of Jesus, you know, he called his disciples and from various walks of life, the fisherman, the tax collector, but he called all of them and he began to teach them. He taught them about what the kingdom of God was like. He used to give major sermons to the public, but also he had moments that he taught them on a one-to-one, -one, but also as a community. And then what did Jesus do? He gave them assignments. He said, go, you know, don't take anything. Um, just go and minister. And we see them how, you know, and he sent them two by two, never alone. And they went, they healed the sick, cast out demons, and they came back and said, Lord, it's been amazing. Because those assignments are important to all of us. Because see, God gives us gifts and talents, and we have to use them. And then what did Jesus do finally? He left them in charge. And he said, bye guys, I'll be back soon, but you do the same that I did with you. And this is what discipleship is. And the, um, the beautiful thing about discipleship is that it's not just an individual journey, but it is a part of an individual journey, but it is also a journey together as a community because Christianity was never uh, an individual walk. It's always in community. So why discipleship? I believe that it's how we grow individually, but also together as a community, together as a group, together as friends. And we discover God's plan for us. So he has an amazing plan for each one of us. And part of our discipleship is to discover what is he calling us to. Where does he want us to go? What does he want us to do? And we discover then what sort of gifts do we have? And how do we use them? Because he wants us to use those gifts to bless others and to grow in him. Another aspect of why discipleship is that we support one another. You know, we need one another. Sometimes, of course, we say, gosh, I don't want anyone around me. But in reality, we were created to need one another and to grow together. And that's where even small groups come into effect. And part of discipleship is becoming who Jesus has created us to be. 
You know, he has, as I said, he has a plan and a purpose, but he also has an identity over us. He has a, a unique identity and we need to become who he wants us to be. You know, in this day and age, there's so many voices. There's so, you know, you look at the news, you don't know what to believe, what not to believe. And so part of discipleship is really learning how to tune into his voice through his word, through prayer, through assignments, and how we can walk under the influence of God. See, we have to walk under the influence of God because as the word of God says, the world is under the influence of Satan. So how do we differentiate? Is this from God or is this what the world is saying? And so part of this tool and part of our discipleship program is to help us to cut out the noise that is around us and to tune in to the voice of God. Let me read Psalm 1 to you. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. Can you see it says, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. In other words, you know, it's saying we are blessed when we don't walk in the counsel of our culture, our world. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. So having a craving, a love and a delight for God's word. And on his law, he meditates day and night. So part of this discipleship is where we learn to not just read the word of God, but to meditate on it and allow that what we meditate to become a reality through our soul and spirit. And he says, then this man will, going to, or woman is going to be like a tree planted by streams of water. You know, we will be so fruitful. It yields its fruit in season and its leaf does not wither. Why? Because we are living according to the word of God. We are living under the influence of the Holy Spirit that we become a fruitful tree. And all that he does, he prospers. In other words, we walk in the favor and the blessing of God. So, here's an encouragement to you. Would you consider beginning this journey of being a Jesus disciple? and a loving the Holy Spirit to transform your life. Now, it does not matter if you have been a Christian for 10 years, 15 years, one day, five minutes. This is for everybody. I've been a believer for almost 36 years. And I was blessed and I am being blessed even walking in this journey. And I believe we all, when we have a heart of humility, we can walk in that pathway of discipleship. See, as it says in the book of Romans, we are on a journey. We have been transformed into the image and likeness of God to fulfill every plan and purpose that God has for us. So my encouragement and my invitation to you is become a Jesus disciple. You know, maybe you've never been through discipleship. You've only been attending church. So here's a chance for you to go deeper. And here's a chance for you to truly grow in the Lord beyond your expectations. Now, the beautiful thing about this is that it is online and it also can be accessed through an app. Uh, on your iPhone or even your Android phone. So it's accessible uh, for everybody. Now, you may say, but I have, you know, one of those old phones that I can only text and receive calls. That's no problem because your group leader can also print um, your required assignments, your weekly schedules and give it to you. So it is an opportunity for everyone. Now, the Jesus Disciple program, if I may call it a program, um, has eight territories, in other words, eight phases. 
and each one of these territories can easily take five to six weeks. So, you know, sometimes you don't need to do the whole lot in one go, but you can do one territory, take a little break, then come on and do the next territory. And what invariably happens is that once you finish the first one, you're, you have got into such a rhythm and you have such a desire for God's word, you want to continue to do um, and to go into God's word more regularly. And that itself is a sign to you to say, hey, there's something that's shifting in me. Okay, so as you can see uh, on your screen, um, you have eight territories and it first begins with Jesus's love. You know, that's the best place to start. Uh, you know, we know that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So we have to understand the love of God. And from there, it then goes to the power of Jesus. How do we move? How do we experience? How do we live in the power of Jesus? From there, we go into God's word, his word, the words of Jesus. And then we look at the ministry of Jesus, the prayers of Jesus, the gifts of Jesus, you know, the fivefold gifts, um, the different gifts that he has enabled us. And then we look at the church that Jesus intended. And sometimes that, that can be so different to the church that we see today. And finally, we go to Jesus's commandment. And the commandment is what I shared right at the beginning, go into all the world. Now, this app has two segments or two sections. Number one is your individual journey. Number two is what you do as a group together. Okay, so when you come into the app, you can see my journey and you can also see groups. So let's start with my journey because that is where you begin. And so each day, as you can see on your screen, you have an assignment. So every day you will have an assignment. And for example, you daily, you're going to have a Bible reading. Um, there is an additional reading that, that you have. That is if you have more time. And um, it's sometimes it's rare that we have more extra time. But you need to go through the recommended Bible reading. And then they also give you a prayer. What do you pray? So, for example, then during the first week, you're going to be praying the Lord's Prayer. Now, in addition to the reading, you also have a scripture meditation. And that is a separate scripture to the um, Bible reading. But you will meditate on this throughout the week. So for each week, it's the same scripture. So it's about three or four verses that you will meditate on. And by the end of the week, here's what, what will happen. You would have absorbed it so much, you would automatically have even memorized it. But beyond memorizing, you would really embrace the revelations that God is giving you through those meditations. Then you also have through the week, you're kind of doing all this. So day one, day two, day three, but through the week, you will have an assignment as you will have a couple of assignments as well. Right. So those are the weekly activities. Now, these weekly activities is where you will need to listen to a minimum of two messages, audio messages, two audio messages by Pastor Jerry Derman or um, someone else. And these messages will be in alignment with the theme of that week. Okay, so for example, in the first week, and we call these faith builders. Okay, so if I refer to faith builders, what I'm referring to are these assignments. Um, Number one is the love from the very first chapter. So he talks about God's love right from Genesis and how we, you know, the second message is how we are his daily delight. And, um, and as I said, on a weekly basis, 
there are ministry assignments. So for the first week, the ministry assignment is obey what Jesus taught us through his word. So how do you put into practice? How do you put into obedience what you are reading? Because it's not just reading, it's not just meditating. But how do we activate ourselves into what he is telling us? And another ministry assignment is encourage others in your group to keep in tra on, on track with their checklist. And, and as you can see here, once you finish an activity, you can tick it off. Okay, so that's kind of the daily, weekly, personal assignments that you will have. And you have this accessible on your, as I said, on your phone, on your desktop, or it will be printed and given to you. So that's your personal journey. Then you have your group journey. So if there, as I mentioned in my introduction, discipleship doesn't happen alone. It happens in a group. And so as a group, what, what do you have to do? So each week as you come, you will be given an assignment within that group. And again, all these are found in the app, right? So for example, here you can see, uh, I have a thing called Sureka's test group and territory one is Jesus's love. And let's go to group meeting number one. And, you know, it's almost like foolproof. Um, and, you know, everything is written there. So when you gather together as a group, there are three aspects. Okay, looking back, looking up and looking forward. Looking back is, hey, how was last week? Just a recap, testimonies from last week. You know, testimonies are powerful. Don't ignore them in what God is doing. Looking up is, what is God telling us today? And looking forward is, hey, what's our plan for next week? So that we are all on the same boat. We all know what's happening. Okay, so as a, when you get together as a group, you will have a group leader. And this group leader would uh, also give you access into the app or the desktop. You know, they'll, they'll create a user ID for you and send you an invitation so that you can then become part of their group. Now, for the first week, there is a uh, scripture text that you will read together. And you will read together and discuss on a couple of questions. See, discussion is so powerful. We learn, actually, sometimes we learn more when we discuss because we also learn from each other. And that's the power of, of a group. So you have a, to have a Bible text that you will get together, read and expound together by discussing questions. Then you have a faith story. Now, these are stories of true believers who have had deep encounters um, based on their faith. And these are amazing stories of people, even from countries that um, have persecution, you know, how God moved even through their faith. So you will read a story and you will, more than discussing, you will then take time to pray even for the persecuted church, for persecuted Christians. And even to say, Lord, help me if I come into a moment like that. Um, so that's the uh, that's second, second thing that you will do as a group. The third thing that you do as a group is you have an assignment together. <clears throat> so you will watch a little video, maximum 10 minutes. Wait 10 minutes. And that video will tell you what your ministry assignment is. So the first one, um, I can kind of tell you this, is where you start writing down names of people who need Jesus. People that you know directly. People that you know that someone else, is, else knows. And you start praying for all these people. You pray for them by name. A very simple act. But that's your ministry assignment for the first week. And finally, as a group, you will, you know, close up in prayer. 
you will you know discuss about next week but also pray for one another and expect god to do amazing things amongst your group and you know as a group you know keep praying for one another because this is how community grows remember you know you're, you're going to be part of a community you're going to be part of this group and so begin to pray for one another begin to encourage one another and something that i tell my people is that create a separate whatsapp group if you have whatsapp create a separate whatsapp group so that you all can communicate with each other you know when do you meet once a week when do you meet uh, because that's important and you know setting aside that time and uh, any other you know encouragements you know prayer requests and being there for one another and so that's uh the weekly gathering of when we come together now through this process <clears throat> you know you will have a group leader but also you will be trained to become a group leader because each week you know i i i recommend this that you are someone else to lead the group everything is written down so you don't have to go off and you know prepare your own message or sermon you don't have to do that everything is given so that you just follow that and have a handle on you know what what are we going to discuss today and where you just guide your group lead your group and it's a great way of being trained and equipped to lead a group that you will lead one day by taking this same material see that's the idea of this that you don't just get discipled by your group leader but then you become a group leader and you have your own group amongst your friends so that you know it just spreads it just grows i guess that's really a very brief introduction to jesus disciple and once again i want to say that it's been an amazing tool for me and i'm i have committed myself to also help nations uh help churches to really embrace it to run with it uh to train and to equip because in this time and age we need to be discipled because the, i was talking to someone yesterday and i said the, and we were talking about discipleship and i said if we have a revelation that with our with this how with discipleship that we can grow we will always want to be discipled so god bless you all uh have a have a wonderful family camp and and i pray that you will begin to embrace this and run with it and really see the fruit and of course yes one more thing record your testimonies so that you celebrate it because at the end of each module or territory you have a time to celebrate so record those testimonies because you know to see wow god you've been doing an amazing work in me okay so take care god bless and hopefully we will see you soon